Planck energy is the unit of energy in the system of Planck units calculated from the three main fundamental constants in physics, the speed of light, the gravitational constant and Planck's constant with a value of around 1.2 times 10 to the 19 power giga electron volts. It is in fact the only combination of these constants that yields the dimensions of energy which can be proven by dimensional analysis. Its value is enormous for high energy physics. For comparison, the collision energies at the LHC are just 13,600 giga electron volts. Still, it shouldn't be thought of as a maximum energy limit because other Planck units, such as the Planck charge, is just about 12 times the elementary charge of an electron. It is commonly thought to be a particular energy scale at which quantum effects of the gravity become significant. An example of this is that theoretically a photon with Planck energy has its wavelengths shorter than its own Schwarzschild radius. Since we cannot currently test this energy scale, there is the question of whether it is a fundamental energy scale in our theories or if it is just a curiosity of dimensional analysis and has no physical relevance in the laws of nature as we know them. We will now explore where Planck energy is used and how it fails to reproduce observable quantities and its implications. The Planck energy is used as a cutoff energy in the calculation of the energy density in quantum electrodynamics. The ground state, the state with the lowest energy of the quantum harmonic oscillator, has a non-vanishing zero-point energy, which is half the oscillation frequency of the corresponding classical harmonic oscillator times Planck's constant. The energy density in quantum electrodynamics can be easily derived as a summed zero-point energy for each oscillator mode. The energy density equation is divergent and becomes infinite unless an ultraviolet frequency cutoff is imposed, signifying up to which frequency range one believes the quantum field theory framework is effectively valid. If one sets this limit to the scale of the Planck energy, the result is 120 orders of magnitude higher than the observation cosmological constraint of dark energy as the energy of the vacuum, leading to the vacuum catastrophe problem in theoretical physics. And this is just accounting for the vacuum contribution of quantum electrodynamics. In theory, it is expected that the total vacuum energy of the complete quantum field theory model is roughly the sum of the vacuum energy contributions of the individual fields. The Planck energy is also used in the theoretical calculation of the Higgs mass. The observable Higgs mass of around 125 giga electron volts is the sum of the Higgs bare mass and its quantum corrections, which are sensible to the ultraviolet cutoff in the same way as the calculation of the energy of the vacuum in quantum electrodynamics. The ultraviolet cutoff is used to regularize the integral equation for the correction of the Higgs mass by the Planck energy, and without this cutoff, the Higgs mass correction and the observable value would be infinite. An extreme fine-tuning with the quantum correction term must take place in order for the observable mass not to be at the energy scale of the Planck mass and energy. This constitutes a so-called hierarchy problem. Thus it is clear that the use of the Planck energy in physics leads to problems with both the measured cosmological constant and the measured Higgs mass. But why is this the case? The speed of light and Planck's constant are used together in relativistic quantum mechanics and the gravitational constant and the speed of light are used together in general relativity, and both combinations provide accurate predictions. But Planck's energy is the only case where the three are used together, excluding the Hawking radiation equation, for which there is no experimental evidence. Problems arise when combining the gravitational constant and Planck's constant. The gravitational constant is known with far less precision than the other two fundamental constants, and gravity has only been precisely tested for separations ranging from the scale of the solar system down to a few millimeters. In contrast, Coulomb's LAR and its electroweak generalization has been tested for separations down to 10 to the power of minus 18 meters. Is the gravitational constant truly constant? Does it vary with time or energy scale? Is it fundamental or it is a combination of more different constants? or a constant and a varying parameter. Plus there is evidence that gravity might behave differently in the larger scales, such as dark matter and dark energy. In particular, modified gravity suggests that gravity is stronger in small accelerations, 
or equivalently in small gravitational field intensities. This is similar to what happens for the masses of fundamental particles in quantum field theory, in which even though they are regarded as fundamental constants, their values vary with the energy scale through renormalization. We will address this particular topic in a future video. It is worth noting that Planck's constant, the gravitational constant and the speed of light are also present in the tollmann oppenheimer folkoff limit as an upper bound of the mass of cold and non-rotating neutron stars before their collapse. But for this case, the combination of constants is not used as a cutoff as for the two cases described before, 